Hello all, welcome back to another video. For today's video, I will be sharing with you all on the possibility of using a malicious Windows RDP server for initial access. Before we begin, I would like to give a special shout out to MEAD861. Thanks for the donation on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Alright all, now let's begin. Looking at an article posted by Microsoft in October 2024, it appears that an advanced persistent thread, also known as APT group named Midnight Blizzard, was observed to be conducting spear phishing attacks using RDP files. RDP files are configuration files on Windows computers which can be double clicked on and executed. It will execute the RDP client binary mstsc.exe and attempt to connect to a remote endpoint depending on the configuration of the RDP file. What this means is that a malicious RDP file was sent to the APT group victims and when executed by the victim, the victim will remote access into a Windows server that is managed by the APT group. So what can an attacker do by having his victim connect to his Windows machine? It seems that you will be able to perform enumeration of files, directories and even connected network drives of your victim's Windows computer. You can also enumerate connected devices such as USB devices. Enumeration of clipboard data seems to be possible too. If we were to look at another article posted by Picker's Security, we can see that they have highlighted the impact of the attack to be similar. Enumeration and exfiltration of files, manipulation of USB devices, and an additional installation of malware which was not highlighted in the Microsoft article. This is pretty interesting as this will allow us to execute code on our victim Windows computer, granting us initial access. This attack vector is not something new. In fact, Black Hills Information Security has published a research on utilizing malicious RDP server as an initial access method back in February 2022. I will not be going through this article as it is going to take a lot of time, but this article provides an excellent walkthrough of how you can actually carry out this attack. As usual, all references used in the video will be posted in the video's description, so be sure to check it out. Now, let's take a look on how we can quickly craft a very simple proof of concept to demonstrate some of the impact that we have discussed from the articles, mainly on enumeration and exfiltration of files and also code execution. First, let's take a look at our setup here. We have two Windows machines separated. One is the RDP server that we will be remoting in and the other will be the client Windows machine that will be launching the RDP configuration file. Let's look at the Windows client machine. Our user here is RDP victim and in his documents folder, it contains two sensitive files, one text file and one image. We will be exfiltrating these two files as proof of concept. Looking at the RDP client binary, there are a few configuration options that we can set. What we are interested in will be the option that will allow us to expose the victim's drives to the RDP server. This can be set under local resources and clicking on more. We can see that there are several devices we can expose to the RDP server. Let's take on drives, which will then expose our C drive and even map network drives as well. Now let's remote into our RDP server with the user TS user. We can see that the RDP connection was successful and now we are in the Windows server. If we were to launch CMD and look at the available drives, we can indeed see that our victim local Windows computer C drive is exposed to the RDP server. We can read files given the permission of the user, which is RDP victim. Now, we can simply exfiltrate his files, such as his text file and image file as shown earlier, onto the RDP server. We can even write files onto the victim local Windows computer too.
Now you might ask, how can we do this automatically when our victim remote into our Windows Server? This can be done so by creating a login script that will be executed in TS user auto startup folder. This means that when our victim RDP into our Windows Server as the TS user, the script will be executed, enumerating and extricating the victim's files on his local Windows computer onto the RDP server automatically. Let's demonstrate this. Okay, this should do it. If our victim decides to RDP into our RDP server as TS user, this proof of concept bad script should execute automatically, stealing his text file and image file onto our RDP server. Let's try it out. Okay, as we can see there is the command prompt window showing. It can be hidden quite easily if we were to execute a binary and setting the shell properties to be hidden instead of just a simple bad script. We have demonstrated that using RDP file, it can indeed enumerate and exfiltrate a victim's local Windows computer. This is pretty cool. How can we execute code? Well, since we can also write files onto the victim's local Windows computer, we can drop a payload into the victim's startup folder. Let's drop a simple bad file that will execute PowerShell as proof of concept into the RDP victim local Windows computer. For this to work, our victim has to restart his Windows session. The payload in his auto startup folder will then be executed. Nice, it worked. We have demonstrated how we can enumerate and exfiltrate files and even execute code on the victim's local Windows computer via a malicious RDP configuration file just like how the APT group Midnight Blizzard has done it. It is pretty crazy to see that there are no warning prompts or alerts when you are connecting to a remote Windows server with your entire C drive getting exposed and mapped to it. I foresee that Microsoft will implement some kind of warning prompt soon if a RDP connection has been configured to expose your local drives to a remote computer. Alright all, this is it to today's video. A quick shout out to all of the people who have donated so far on this channel. Thanks all, you have helped to keep me motivated in posting more content. I really appreciate it. If you are interested in learning about hacking Windows Active Directory and have a feel of how it looks like, there is a playlist available on my YouTube channel over here. It has 4 episodes which showcases the common scenarios you might encounter and what kind of tools you can use to test a Windows Domain Active Directory environment. Thanks for watching and please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all and I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye.